Hi guys, and today while I'm just waiting to fetch my son from school, um, I thought I'd make a video talking about <laughs> perimenopause again. So this video is for all my ladies. It's for the 40 plus ladies. Uh, let's see here, hold on, that's a bit of a better angle. So 40 plus ladies, if you're going through menopause, perimenopause, now perimenopause are the 10 to 2, can be 2 years, 10 years before you hit menopause. Menopause is defined as not having had a natural period for more than a year. <laughs> so when your period stops, you're in menopause. And from what I read and research, and I'm quite a nerd and quite a buff, um, perimenopause are the turbulent years and I can attest to that. So from around the age of 40, 41, I think it was 40, I got my first night sweats and I woke up sheets soaked. So I was like, what the hell is going on? So there will be traffic noises, sorry, as I talk. So I thought um, it's either the duvet was too hot or, you know, the wrong, I don't know, bedding or something, but of course it didn't happen again. And then, well, throughout the month, and then when it happened again, this like intense sweating at night, I realized it's probably night sweats because it came with low mood, low energy. And one of the things I was feeling was like brain fog and afternoon brain fog. And I'm feeling that again now. So basically I'm not on anything. If you followed some of my videos, you would have seen that some of my perimenopause, menopause videos are... Um, me doing the research, then I went to a doctor and then he's put me on a testosterone gel and then um, progesterone gel. And uh, I will link to those videos down below. So when I first went, um, my progesterone was like rock bottom, which is one of the first signs and one of the first things that happens in perimenopause. And my tes testosterone also like rock bottom. And then I was uh, listening to Menopause Taylor Barbara Taylor, I will link to her menopause channel down below. And she was saying that women who take the birth control pill may not even notice perimenopause. They just sail right through into menopause. And here's why. It's because on the pill, you are being delivered a steady dose of estrogen and progesterone. Now, yes, they are in synthetic form. They are not bioidentical in the pill. You do not get, as far as I know today, a bioidentical pill, birth control pill, which one wonders why not, because it's estrogen and progesterone in the birth control pill. Anyway, so she was saying that these ladies, because they're getting delivered these hormones, they don't even notice this thing, they don't have hot, fl hot flushes, night sweats, mood swings, they're just cruising. And so I went onto the pill because I thought maybe that will stabilize things for me, and yes, it did, it did work, but there's something about being on a birth control pill that I don't know what it is. I just don't like the idea of it. I don't like the idea of something synthetic when we have bioidentical available. And so I still needed the testosterone cream whilst on the pill. I felt okay. I felt pretty good. But now that I'm off everything, um, also I had COVID. And I must say during the time of when I had COVID, which was late Feb, early March, everything went out the window. At the same time as when I went to test my sex hormones, I discovered that my thyroid was very low. There is no reason for my thyroid to be low other than age and the fact that I'm a woman. I don't have um, antibodies. You know, my, my body is not attacking my thyroid. So I should otherwise be healthy, but my thyroid is low. So I'm now on two thyroid medications, Tetroxin and Euthyrox. I'm trying to hold the camera steady here. Um, and so besides those two, which obviously are life threatening if you don't have them, I stopped taking the, I stopped using the testosterone gel and the progesterone gel. I don't know why. I just am not a fan of rubbing gels and creams into my skin, but I do believe it is the best way to get these hormones in transdermally. I've been listening now lately to a an American woman. Her name is Kitty Anderson. I will link to her channel down below. She claims to be a board certified menopause coach. So basically she's trying to help women 
through this period in their life to navigate, especially with the world of um, doctors in America who maybe don't know enough about HRT. HRT is hormone replacement therapy, in case you didn't know. And so she's trying to navigate, help women navigate through all that with all the correct information. And she's a big proponent of replacing lost hormones. And she talks about using high dose HRT, which makes sense to my mind, because if we feel good in our 20s and our hormones are surging and they're high, why wouldn't we replace them to high levels? So my thinking is that so let me just back up a bit. Currently, I'm on my testosterone gel cream, which has now actually run out today, so I need to get more. But I haven't been using anything for a while, and I have been feeling low. And so what I want to do is this month, I've had a period, period a week ago, I want to start on the progesterone cream again. I'm not on the birth control pill anymore, like I said, I just there's something about using a birth control pill that I guess because it's synthetic maybe although it's very easy it's convenient you just pop a pill and you're done having said all that not being on anything really other than my thyroid medication for the last I'd say month and a bit six weeks I do feel low so right now as I sit in this car making this video I am feeling low energy low mood and one of the problems is that my motivation to exercise, my motivation to eat right, my motivation to do almost anything is, is rock bottom, even on the thyroid medication. So I also feel, it's hard to describe, but there's like a, a mild panic feeling that I get, like a and now also having had COVID, I don't know what's a, a lasting, lingering effect of having COVID, although I was vaccinated, so I seemed to sail through having COVID. It wasn't so bad, but yeah, I, I'm in a low point. So today I went and tested my T3, which is my thyroid, the active thyroid hormone, my T4. And I've tested progesterone again, which I know will be zero almost. <laughs> My estradiol, which is the form of estrogen that we lose in menopause. There's three kinds of estrogen. Estrone, estriol, and estradiol. And I've tested my testosterone again to see if the testosterone gel that I'm using is boosting my levels. And then we will see. So what I'm trying to say with this video if you're in perimenopause and you're feeling weird and you're feeling low and your energy is low and your mood is low, these could all be signs of low hormones. Please go and get some blood tests, work with a doctor and also as Kitty Anderson says, you need to push for what you want. You need to push the doctors to give you things to feel better and you need to tell them that you're willing to test and experiment and I know it's expensive. I had to pay for these blood tests myself here in South Africa. I paid over a thousand rand for five, I mean like one, close to one and a half thousand rand for five blood tests. And that's without even going to see the doctor. It adds up and it does feel exhausting sometimes. <laughs> and it does feel draining sometimes. Like I just feel, um, like I just want to feel like my old self. And on the days when you're tired and you've got low energy and low mood, what I'm doing right now is doing a lot of deep breathing, <laughs> meditation, and I'm feeling like I need to meditate. I'm feeling like I need to breathe. And an interesting thing that I learned from watching Kitty's videos was that she was saying that when her testosterone levels are higher, she can tolerate listening to music. And I just thought, oh my God, I'm battling to actually tolerate music. So something is off, you know, like it feels like my nervous system is hypersensitive, hyperwired. I, I, there's some days I feel like I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown and yet it shouldn't be that way. There's no sort of outward reason why I should be having a nervous breakdown <laughs> other than perimenopause. Um, I, I, 
want to go out in the world and I feel good when I'm out and about, but to get out, to get myself out the house is like, oh, it's like a, a big mental operation, like <laughs> mental gymnastics to just get ready. To wake up in the morning, um, it feels like a battle. I feel stiff and sore and achy. And yes, I know people say that's with old age, but what happens in old age? All our hormones decline, all of them pretty much. Um, and um, I wouldn't say I have any major injuries. I've got one hip that I battle with, but another point I want to make is that it's not fair on the people around us for us to be feeling this way because then we take it out on our loved ones. So. I'm feeling low and drained and tired and then what happens is when I fetch my son in the afternoon I don't have the energy to give to him. I'm not bubbly. I'm not happy. I'm not um, and then I get ratty and then ugh, the poor little guy. Shame. It's not fair on him. I owe it to him. I owe it to myself to boost my levels. So now when the doctor Back to is it two years ago, three years ago, I will <laughs> um, check on the dates of my early video. So when the doctor tested and we put me on testosterone cream and um, progesterone cream, at that stage we also tested my estradiol because it's one of the tests that they do to see if you're in menopause, perimenopause, just where your hormones are at. I mean, we know in our 40s, like it's a given, our hormones are declining. It's just... It's what happens. So we tested my estradiol and for that sort of phase in my cycle, I can't remember, I think we tested in the luteal phase, my estradiol, so my estrogen, was on the low side of normal, even though I'm not in menopause, because he said your estrogen is not low enough for HRT. I get that. I'm not in menopause. So by the medical standards, I do not need HRT. I'm still producing estradiol. However, <laughs> I don't feel optimal and I can feel something is missing, something is low. Why and how do I know? I still get night sweats, which shows me that something is low, something is missing. And so my message is to know your own body, tune into your body and if you're starting to feel panicky, I believe from all the research and all the reading I've done and all the YouTube videos I've watched, I believe that that is a sign of low hormones and often they will prescribe antidepressants, they will prescribe anti-anxiety meds, they will prescribe sleeping tablets, but maybe, just maybe, and I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor, but maybe if you boost your hormones, all of that goes away. I don't know. So I'm on this journey, I'm sharing it here with you on YouTube in the hopes that it will help one of you, some of you. I want to help you by empowering you, by opening the door to the knowledge, telling you to do some research, encouraging you to learn as much as you can. And I know it can seem overwhelming and the lower our hormones sink, the harder it is to pick ourselves up out of that hole, I know. The brain fog is a real thing because now you feel tired, you feel anxious, you feel overwhelmed, you feel panicky and you don't want to go and do the research and you just want someone to fix it. And if you have the time, money and energy, money, <laughs> energy and money to go to top class endocrinologist, I think that is the way to go. And then uh, just keep retesting and work with someone. But obviously you need to empower yourself anyway with knowledge so that you can work hand in hand with the provider because they are not you. They don't know how you feel and they don't know if you are feeling optimal at certain levels. Only you know. And it is trial and error. It is trial and error. So I'm still on my journey, people. <laughs> and if you bump into me, and you see me out and about and I seem a bit spaced or zoned. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. And uh, if you're overseas, 
I just hope I can share my journey with you and give you some encouragement. I think in America there may be more or different resources to what we have here in South Africa. Who knows? But uh, I also want to add one thing for the men. If you have men in your life, call them now. Call them now to watch the video and tell them, men, I'm telling you on behalf of your woman, she's not going crazy. I promise you, she is not going crazy. Something as small as a decline in hormones can feel on the inside like a huge shift. It can feel like you are not yourself, you're zombie-like, you're walking through mud, um, very much more irritable, uh, just it's low mood and low energy but it's, it's, it's not like normal low mood and low energy, it's hard to explain. Men only have a slow steady decline of testosterone. We have fluctuations like this during perimenopause and then we have a big decline. So men, I promise you, your woman is not going crazy when she craves sugar, sweets, alcohol, food, when she feels like she has no energy to exercise, when she feels irritable and grumpy, she means it. Um, and I'm not talking about a hypochondriac here. I'm talking about if in general she was always okay and now she's showing these signs. Have patience with her and take her to an endocrinologist <laughs> and get her blood tests. Blood tests are the answer, I think. I mean, we have the, the option to test. And yes, it's expensive. But as um, my boyfriend said to me the other day, he said, you know, you spend money on makeup, on hair, on eyelashes, on all these other things, on nails, and yet you, you're walking around feeling crappy inside. How's this making sense? And I was like, duh, he's right. Firstly, let's start from the inside. If I feel good on the inside, that will give me the energy, and from there, I will want to rejoin the world. So, that is my little heart to heart with you on menopause perimenopause I hope it helped in some way I just wanted to share the reason I'm opening up is to just create a dialogue so that you know you're not alone in whatever you're going through please uh, drop me a comment in the comments section and tell me what you're going through if anything has helped if you found any good doctors what medications you've tried and now it's going to get noisy as it's the school run pick up time so I'll see you in my next video thank you for watching and I love you all Bye. And just to add, before I end off this video, I know I did end it off in the car, but um, the website that, um, not the website, sorry, the YouTube channel, you see there goes menopause brain. <laughs> the YouTube channel is called Create a Menopause Recovery, and that is Kitty Anderson's channel. As I mentioned her um, channel in the car, I've just discovered her. I'm gonna link to her channel in the description box be down below please have a look she's got links to documents on all the benefits of hrt she's done all the research it's all there for you you just have to print it out so here i've printed out one called postmenopausal hormone replacement therapy and cardiovascular disease the value of transdermal estradiol and micronized progesterone if as she says you're battling to get the hrt from your doctor you can go with research like this and that may just convince them that you know what you're talking about. You're taking your health into your own hands. You are willing to work with them. I think her suggestions are fantastic. I know it's hard to watch a million videos, which is why I'm putting this at the end of this video. I do want to make a separate video. But for those of you that have just watched this video, please, and you are in perimenopause or menopausal hell, please print out some of her research and take it to your doctor and demand the HRT that you deserve, if that's the route you want to go. Okay, that's it for me. Bye.